All right, we got a question from Brooke. She wants to know what's the easiest way to remember words, like the actual vocab of Japanese. She's been learning for a while and she's having trouble remembering the words that she's actually gone through the trouble of learning, right? She's going through some courses and stuff. How do I keep these in my head, right? How do I not forget them? Well, there's a couple of ways you can actually go about this. And the way I always, I always recommend is not to remember the words. Right, so don't focus on the words. The words, they sound foreign, foreign, right? First of all, especially when you first start. Everything's, they, they sound foreign and they sound similar. Everything sounds similar, so everything kind of blends together, right? So first off, I'm gonna give you the biggest tip, um, and that is not to remember words. It's to remember circumstances, situations, and, fr and even phrases. What does that mean? That means just don't focus on words. I wouldn't usually, I don't usually go through the trouble of doing vocab lists or, or having a word of a list. I like to hear them in their context. Right? That's why I recommend anime. Another reason why, another reason why anime is amazing, God. It'll, ne it'll never stop. But anyway, is because that you can find circumstances in which they're used and your brain remembers stories so much better. You remember, your brain remembers emotions so much better than actual abstract sounds. <laughs> Try and say that. A week from now, I'm trying to remember that. That's, you know what I mean? It's gonna be hard. But if, you know, I was shot in the face because I was trying to save my baby, and the sound when the gun hit my cheek was like, you probably have a hard time <laughs> getting that out of your head. That's something I saw. It's a grotesque example. But your brain does. There's a lot of studies on this. I've talked about them before, right? To remember stories and, and emotion, right? Emotion, you have to make your, uh, your Japanese learning emotionally sticky. I've talked about that. It's a whole other video you can go check out um, down there in my newsletter. But anyway, aside from that, is you have to make them, you, you really want to get them from context. That's one of the main reasons you want to get your Japanese from actual anime or, or drama or something your mom said to you when you were a baby. That's how people learn English, right? It's a lot more emotionally attached, right? A lot more visceral of an experience than blah, it's just a sound, you know what I mean? Humans have, because you hear sounds all day long. All day long, there's a thousand billions of sounds that are going on right now. Your brain deletes them all because there's no need for you to remember them. It's just gonna cloud your brain. You have only so much RAM, so much memory that you can hold at one time. Your brain deletes most of the stuff so you can concentrate on something and not go insane. So, in order to overcome that, you have to have something contextual and situational that your brain can grab onto. Right? And that's usually going to be learning from context, right? So, when I, when I would learn, you know, when I, sometimes I recommend people to, if they're going to do the whole SRS or fast card thing, I'd, I'd get the phrases from an anime that you're watching. Most people are watching anime in my channel, so I recommend them to get an anime. Get a scene that you really like. What's, just think of a scene, like an anime, any anime you like, just a scene that you love, the death, you love that scene. Or maybe you know someone died or someone said something nice or sweet or good go get the phrase that was says and said in that scene and then you can use that in your SRS you can use it in your flashcard don't get just the word right you can break it apart and figure out the words of course right figure out what this word means that word means in the whole phrase but when you remember you want to remember the phrase of the word right? so that's how I would remember vocab I would not focus so much on the individual words I've given lots of other advice too based on you know different situations right so there's mnemonic devices I've talked, this might support you, right? Um, I've talked about these, that's also down in the, news, the video newsletter. You can go down there, get a whole video on mnemonic devices. I've talked about this. So if you're interested in that, right, that might be something that also supports you. Um, they're just basically, well, I'm not gonna go into memory. Well, you can research, mem mnemonic devices are just things that sound similar in English that you can create a, a story on, right? That's why it, it's also story-based, right? So one of my famous examples that a lot of people remember is something about is sad is the sad toe village. Right? So there's a word sato in Japanese. Right? It's one of a word from an anime. It means village. And uh, in order to remember the word sato, because right, it's a hard word, I remember people, I have people remember a sad toe village. This is one of my oldest examples, right? A toe, like your, your big toe. Imagine a, a village full of toes. And they're sad, they're crying. They're just so upset because they're toes, right? Just, oh my God, I don't want to be a toe anymore. Why? And there's just all these, these bawling toes in this village and they're walking around doing their toe in things. They're just so sad. So just visualize that. Take 10 seconds out of your day to just think about the, how sad that village is, right? Sad toe, sad toe. And now the word village and sato is, very, is, is linked in your mind. Right? It's gonna be very hard to get that image out because it's a grotesque, it's a visceral, it's a story, it's got some emotion in it. 
So that's how you can create your stories. I like to have my stories come from actual anime scenes and uh, that way I don't have to do any work. But I've done that as well. I've done mnemonic devices. I've taught a whole course on how to use mnemonic devices. I've created like hundreds of mnemonics for students to use. So that's another thing you can definitely use, mnemonic devices. Um, and the last thing I can end you with this, this video is <clears throat> You shouldn't just learn words for the sake of learning words, right? So this might be your problem as well. I'm not quite sure, but a lot of people I see is they just, they have a list that they got from somewhere. They got some words that they got from somewhere and they're trying to learn the list because someone said they should learn it. Well, if you're learning it and, you n and you're never hearing the word, you're not hearing it, you're not, it's, you're not, your brain's not being stimulated by the word to recall the meaning, right? Then it's probably, it might not be the word for you. Might be not in the words you need to learn at the moment. So like maybe you're watching, so for example, you're watching an anime. Maybe you might be watching a drama. Maybe you might be living in Japan. Whatever your situation is, the words that you're gonna hear on a regular basis, they're gonna, they're gonna bounce back and stimulate your memory, right? In order for you to, to bring that word that you, 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 you surface learned, right? It's very shallow. It's not so deep in your subconscious. You read it in a book. It's not there, it's not ingrained yet. Well, you have to, yeah, the, the word has to be recalled, right? So someone has to say it around you, you have to hear it again, or you might have to flashcard it again. Right? That's just, flashcards are just simulating uh, real life situations where you should have, you should, the word should be recalled automatically, right? So if you learn the word refrigerator, right, and you use the refrigerator once a day, and you're like, hey, how do I open the refrigerator? Where's the food? It's in the refrigerator. I need to buy a new refrigerator. Fridger, 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 and it keeps coming back, maybe once a day, maybe once a week, maybe once a month, right? And so that's how it goes deeper and deeper. Every time the brain, every time you're, you get recalled on the word, it goes, you get stimulated, it goes deeper and deeper and deeper into your subconscious. I'm doing this, I'm doing this as going into the spinal column, right? Down here, deep down into the subconscious, eating, eating to, into your brain, right? Um, so you can't forget it. So that's how you not forget words. So if you're, if you learn a word, maybe the word economics, and you're just not recalling it, right? You don't, you're not an economics major, right? You don't actually use economics. You don't watch TV shows on economics. And you're just not being recalled. That's probably not the word for you at the moment, right? You're probably gonna forget it. You probably have other words that you should be learning at the moment. Maybe you can learn it later on, but you should probably learn a word that's gonna be able to be recalled really quickly in your everyday normal situation in life, right? So maybe the word that you use, you use a word that you use a lot if you live in Japan, Right? Or if you're watching anime, then a word from the anime. It doesn't matter what the word is. It could be fucking Pirate King. It does not matter. Right? Who's the judge what the word is? But that's the word that's going to be recalled. It's going to come back a lot. It's going to trigger your memory. You're going to learn it. It's the word you need. Your brain has decided that you need to learn because of its repetition, because of its frequency. No, no moral judgments based on the word Pirate King, whether you should or should not learn it. Who, who does that? I mean, you know what I mean? Your brain's going to decide naturally for you based on your frequency and your recall rate. So if you're really just not remembering it, no matter what you do, and you've used stories and mnemonic devices, well then you need to get some recall frequency. You can create your own with SRS programs, which is, is basically, it's, it's synthetic repetition, synth synthetic repetition. You're, you're tricking your brain into thinking this word should go deep into your memory, right? And you can have some control over the words that you learn, but you should really get in a situation where you're gonna use and hear and need to use and hear, I said that twice for a reason, Japanese. And then your brain can naturally figure out the frequency of the words that's around you and, and you'll naturally, it'll naturally bring the words that you need to learn deeper and deeper and deeper into your subconscious so you don't forget it. Okay, so that was a shitload of information. You should be really good with that. Enjoy, I, I really think it's gonna support you. This is stuff I give to like private students, right? So I gave you a really good extra, really extra powerful lesson here. So I hope, I hope you like that. All right, bye.